The discovery is historic. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 astronomy discoveries. His discovery is still the starting point for exploration of the Big Bang. It was huge. There was now evidence of a new theory for the beginning of the entire universe. This is a, a huge discovery, not only confirming Einstein's ideas, but opening a whole new way of exploring the universe. For this list, we're looking at the all-time biggest discoveries in astrophysics and cosmology. What new discovery do you hope to see in your lifetime? Tell us in the comments. Number 10, Jupiter's moons. In 1610, one of the most influential astronomers in history, Galileo Galilei, was able to see four strange objects that were circling the planet Jupiter millions of miles away through his telescope. These objects, as it turns out, were Jupiter's four largest moons, Ganymede, Callisto, Io, and Europa from biggest to smallest. Aside from the Earth's moon, this quartet became the first moons ever discovered in the solar system, thanks in large part to their absolutely huge sizes. Ganymede and Callisto are both the size of planets. Today, Jupiter's moons are still some of the most intriguing bodies in the solar system. Europa has subsurface oceans that even have the potential to host alien life. Number 9. Uranus it's strange to imagine now that there was ever a time before we knew about the eight planets in the solar system. But two of those planets, Uranus and Neptune, are difficult or impossible to see with the naked eye. Humans thousands of years ago could see Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn in the night sky. But it wasn't until 1781 that Frederick William Herschel spotted Uranus using a telescope that he'd built himself. It took another 65 years for Neptune to be discovered as well, and then in 1930, Clyde Tumba observed Pluto. We got a pretty clear indication at that point in time of how much work it really did take because just of the massive number of objects that he had to scan. Although it was thought to be a planet at the time, it was later reclassified as a dwarf planet and the first ever trans-Neptunian object, which is exciting in and of itself. Number 8. Stellar Nucleosynthesis what makes stars shine? Stars are made in part of the lightest element in the periodic table, hydrogen. Through the process of nuclear fusion, stars fuse hydrogen atoms into the next lightest element, helium, and so on, eventually producing heavier elements. This process is why stars burn and produce so much energy. And when stars run out of hydrogen to fuse, they'll die. The theory was first suggested by physicist Arthur Eddington in 1920, and then later, additional research developed the theory, proving that he was correct. Stellar nucleosynthesis is why all life on Earth is made of stardust. Number 7. Other Galaxies The Milky Way is huge. It's estimated to be more than 100,000 light-years from one side to the other, and is full of billions of stars and planets just like ours. The Milky Way, we believe, is a spiral galaxy. So what we're really seeing when we look up at night at this band is we're seeing our place in the universe. We're part of a giant disk of stars. But it wasn't until the mid-1920s that we had confirmation of another galaxy. The other, of course, is the Andromeda Galaxy, or Messier 31. The Andromeda Galaxy was our first clue that there existed a universe outside the Milky Way. We've known about it forever. On the dark sky, it's visible to the naked eye as a faint smudge. But being so far away, you can't see individual stars in Andromeda without a good-sized scope. It was first described as a nebula by Abd al-Rahman al-Shafi, a Persian astronomer who lived during the Islamic Golden Age. Almost a thousand years later, the astronomer Edwin Hubble would determine that Andromeda is not a nebula at all, but rather an entire galaxy, making it the first galaxy other than our own to be conclusively identified. Since then, we've gone on to find evidence for roughly 2 billion galaxies in the observable universe and confirmed over 4,000 exoplanets beyond our star system. This discovery rocked the world and changed our view of the universe forever. We no longer thought that the Milky Way was the entire universe. Now we knew that there could be hundreds, thousands, maybe millions more galaxies just like our own. Number 6. Black Holes In 1916, Albert Einstein published the final form of his theory of relativity. Einstein really recognized that gravitational fields are equivalent to talking about space and time not being separate entities. Those many equations, which still form the basis of much of modern physics, predicted the existence of probably the most terrifying phenomenon in the universe, the black hole. Or wormhole 
called an Einstein-Rosen bridge, a space anomaly that may actually be a gateway to parallel universes. Carl Schwarzschild found the solution to Einstein's proposed theory that same year, but it would take another 50 years for the first black hole, which was thought by many to be impossible, to be observed. That black hole was Cygnus X1. Many scientists contributed to its discovery as well as developing this area of science, Stephen Hawking chief among them. Then in 2019, the Event Horizon Telescope was able to capture the first image of a black hole. The Event Horizon Telescope is a project that we've been working on for many, many years to take the first picture of a black hole, and we've done it. Number five, dark matter and energy. Although dark matter is still technically hypothetical, there's really no other explanation for the way galaxies exist and function. The best evidence for dark matter today comes from measurements of something called the cosmic microwave background, the afterglow of the Big Bang. But that's another story. All of the evidence we have says that dark matter is there and accounts for much of the stuff in those beautiful spiral galaxies that fill the heavens. Galaxies, the way we observe them, don't have enough mass to maintain their large shapes and sizes. Unless, of course, it turns out that there's some other type of mass that we're unable to detect. Enter dark matter. It's thought to make up about 85% of the matter in the universe, and it's needed in order to make sense of the gravitational effects accepted today. The whole concept of dark matter is enormous. It means that you know, when you're looking at the sky, you're only looking at a few percent of the, of the universe, that most of the universe is invisible. Dark matter shouldn't be confused with dark energy, however. Dark energy is still quite the mystery but it's theorized to be a force that balances out gravity and drives the universe's expansion. Observations of distant supernovae tell us that the expansion of the universe is accelerating. That acceleration matches the effect you would get if empty space itself had a tiny bit of energy. As more space comes into existence because of that expansion thing, the more dark energy you get. Number four, redshift and blue shift. One of the big reasons we know the universe is expanding at all is the existence of redshift. As large objects in outer space move further away, the wavelength of the light is stretched toward the red part of the electromagnetic spectrum. This means that the faster an object moves away, the redder it looks. And we can use this information to estimate how quickly it's traveling. There's also the opposite phenomenon, blue shift, which happens when a celestial object is coming towards us. One such famous example is the Andromeda Galaxy, which will someday collide with the Milky Way. Number three, Hubble's Law. In 1912, astronomer Vesto Slipher discovered that distant galaxies are redshifted. Hubble drew on this data in 1929 to demonstrate that the universe is expanding and that the rate of expansion is speeding up. In essence, Hubble's Law states that galaxies are moving away from Earth at speeds proportionate to their distance. The further away they are, the faster they're moving. All galaxies on average were moving away from us, and stranger still, those that were twice as far away were moving twice as fast. And those that were three times as far away were moving three times as fast, and so on. Everything was moving away from us. It's also known as the Hubble-Lemaitre Law, since Belgian astronomer Georges Lemaitre derived the idea from general relativity two years earlier. This knowledge also gave way to the Hubble constant, the rate of cosmic expansion. Using the Hubble constant, we've been able to get extremely accurate measurements as to the age of the universe, which is around 13.77 billion years old. The Hubble constant is one of the most profound quantities in physics. It tells us about the age of the universe, it tells us what the universe is made out of, it helps us understand dark matter and dark energy. By getting this precise measurement, we're really moving the field forward. Number two, cosmic microwave background radiation. The Big Bang was an explosion of incomprehensible scale and force. We can actually still detect the radiation left behind by the Big Bang today, which is called cosmic microwave background radiation, or CMBR. So the background of microwaves that pervades the universe, because they were emitted during the early expansion of the universe and have been traveling and getting stretched out ever since. It was first predicted by Ralph Alpher and Robert Herman in the late 40s, but was actually found completely by chance in the 1960s 
by Arno Penzias and Robert Woodrow Wilson, who were experimenting with satellite communication. Theory, and in fact, that's what we found. We confirmed the theory. Rather unexpectedly, I might add. Their instrument indicated the presence of CMBR, which physicists had been after for 20 years. CMBR quickly became the cornerstone of cosmology, winning the duo a Nobel Prize. How'd that feel, Robert? It felt pretty strange to win the Nobel Prize. I didn't feel comfortable being on the same lift with Einstein. But despite Robert's humility, there's no doubt of the significance of the discovery. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Kepler's Laws. In the 17th century, Johannes Kepler wrote The Laws of Planetary Motion. Kepler and his theories were crucial in the better understanding of our solar system dynamics and is a springboard to newer theories that more accurately approximate our planetary orbits. Gravitational Waves. In 2016, we finally made our first observation of gravitational waves. What is a gravitational wave and why does it uh, sort of change everything? So a gravitational wave is actually a ripple in the fabric of space, right? We know you throw a pebble into a pond, the water ripples, right? Mm -hmm. Now this is a ripple, but not with water. It's in space itself. Radio astronomy. Pioneered by Carl Jansky, radio astronomy is our best tool for studying the cosmos. He built the very first device to listen to the sun. We call that a radio telescope, such as the example we have here. Water on Mars. In the 2010s, NASA announced evidence of liquid water on Mars, although not all researchers agree. What we're going to announce today is that Mars is not the dry, arid planet that we thought of in the past. Today we're going to announce that under certain circumstances, liquid water has been found on Mars. Organic molecules on comets. This 2015 discovery suggests life on Earth could have originated from outer space. The organics are not only very small molecules embedded in the ice, it's really material, rigid material, solid material. And whatever the scale we look at, we see that material all around the surface and also below the surface. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, heliocentrism. We've actually known that the Earth is a globe for thousands of years, but the fact that our planet orbits the sun rather than vice versa is another story. The Greeks had toyed with the idea one of them, Aristarchus, seems to have taken it seriously and suffered ridicule as a result. Greek astronomer Aristarchus of Samos proposed the idea back in the 3rd century BC, but it didn't gain traction until the 16th century when the Renaissance mathematician Nicholas Copernicus argued that the Sun, not the Earth, was the center of the solar system. And now suddenly, all the planets are going always the same way around. They're not stopping. Copernicus realized that the movements of the planets were better explained if the sun were at the center of the solar system and the Earth circled it like an ordinary planet. It's tough to come to terms with the fact that you're not the center of the universe, and the Catholic Church condemned the idea as heretical when Galileo's observations supported it. Copernicus was, of course, correct. Today, this model is called the heliocentric model. Without it, we wouldn't have been able to advance astrophysics at all. One of the more remarkable things about Copernicus is that he did all of his work with very crude tools. In the observatory that he built, he didn't even have a telescope. He truly revolutionized astronomy. He changed the way we think about everything. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.